election. There is power consolidation, rigged primary, rigged media, and rigged Pied Piper candidate drive consolidation. And the American people agree. A Politico Morning Consult poll out today finds nearly half of respondents, 46%, say widespread voter fraud may take place on Election Day. Those polls saying they're most concerned with voter intimidation, illegal immigrants voting, and people fraudulently casting ballots for people who are dead. We'll examine the issue tonight. I'll be talking with noted conservative commentator Patrick Buchanan, who says the Republican establishment is simply panicking about Donald Trump's refusal to accept the election outcome unconditionally. He says because it, quote, the fears of the people for whom Trump speaks no longer accept its political legitimacy or moral authority. We'll take that up with Pat Buchanan. Also among my guests tonight, the Weekly Standard's Fred Barnes. Trump supporter, evangelical leader, Pastor Robert Jeffress joins me. And a lot to take up here tonight. Donald Trump once again outworking Hillary Clinton, holding three rallies in the battleground states of North Carolina and Pennsylvania. At a rally in Fletcher, North Carolina, Trump hit Hillary Clinton over another pay-to-play scandal uncovered by WikiLeaks. Now from WikiLeaks, we've just learned she tried to get $12 million from the King of Morocco for an appearance for pay for play. That's why I'm proposing a pass of ethics reforms to make our government honest once again. Trump will be holding another rally this hour in Newtown, Pennsylvania. We'll be bringing that to you when he takes the stage. Our top story tonight, the 14th, the 14th tranche of WikiLeaks documents released today. There have now been some 25,000 emails made public by WikiLeaks. This latest round, Hillary Clinton arranging a $12 million donation from the King of Morocco, that money going to the Clinton Foundation. Clinton's close aide, Uma Abedin, blasted the arrangement. Uh, she wrote, quote, Clinton created this mess and she knows it, end quote. Let's look at some of the most damaging emails to date. DNC Chair Donna Brazil tipping off the Clinton campaign, turning over a question asked at a uh, CNN presidential town hall. Listen to Brazil trying to defend, trying to explain that one. WikiLeaks released a March 12th Podesta email showing you messaging the Clinton campaign with the exact wording of a question asked at the March 13th Kelly, CNN TV Kelly, One town hall debate. Kelly, Where did you get I, it? I, 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 you know, as a Christian woman, I understand persecution, but I will not sit here and be persecuted because your information is totally false. And in a paid Wall Street speech, Hillary Clinton told top banking executives that she has, quote, both a public and private position on Wall Street reform. Clinton calling for open trade and open borders in a paid speech to a Brazilian bank, despite maintaining publicly that she was opposed to TPP, the free trade agreement with Pacific Rim nations. And Clinton campaign chairman John Podesta writing it's OK for illegals to vote with a driver's license. Joining me now, executive editor of the Weekly Standard, Fox News contributor Fred Barnes. Fred, great to have you here. Thank you. In the two most recent national polls, Donald Trump actually has a lead, 1.2 points. Uh, this is a tight race. We have some uh, battleground states uh, that are uh, a little wider than that. But this mm -hmm. really is remarkable. When you think of everything they've hit Donald Trump with, they, the liberal media, the Clinton cartel, the campaign, uh, the GOP establishment, I mean, it's incredible, his performance. Don't you think? Well, well I think, uh, you know, one of the things that is true here is that Donald Trump still has a chance to win the election. Uh, I don't think it's a particularly great chance, but he has one. And, uh, you know, if four times in this general election and, and earlier, he has come back from falling behind six, seven points right. uh, behind. Uh, and, and every time he's come back to be nearly tied with Hillary Clinton, did so after the two conventions. Do you it's a think it's harder an here, but it can happen. Yeah, I, I, you say a slim chance. To me, it looks to, mm -hmm. like a very good chance. There's a, mm -hmm. uh, two and a half weeks to well, the you've election. Cited, 
you've cited a couple polls. There are an awful lot of them uh, well, that show him uh, trailing by six or seven points. Right. I think we I think we yeah. agree on one thing, and that is the election isn't over yet. Yeah. I, but I, I do think it's important that we point out that those two polls that I cited are the two mm -hmm. most recent polls. Right. And, uh, you know, the, the idea of carrying, uh, you know, the, that tail through it all, I'm not sure is particularly helpful. Uh, the, the, the IBD poll, by the way, we should point out, was the most accurate poll uh, in, mm -hmm. in, 2000, in the 2012 contest. Uh, Indeed it was. This reaction of the national media, and I don't say just liberal media this time, but I, I, the national media, to Trump saying he will wait to see the outcome before saying that, uh, you know, he would accept the outcome. This is the instance in which I see the establishment and the media elites. Uh, I mean, they are savaging him for being intelligent, for being rational and, and responsible to his voters. Just as was Al Gore, just as eight liberals have been uh, over mm -hmm. the course of time. What in the world could there be a more transparent bias uh, and effort to attack uh, the Republican nominee than this instance? Well, I can't think of one right no. offhand. And, and you didn't mention uh, much of the media's reaction and, and the reaction of a lot of Democrats to uh, President uh, George W. Bush winning in 2000. I, I still remember all those complaints that somehow there was hanky-panky in Ohio and he didn't really win in 2004. Mm -hmm. uh, but this time, look, I think Trump's statement by saying, look, I'll, I'll wait until the election yeah. uh, uh, election day to decide whether I'll accept the, the result or not. And, yeah, he said, if it's clear, it. if it's a clear uh, decision, I'll, I'll go along with that. Uh, but what this has done is, I think he's been very clever. I think the media was just waiting to declare him completely dead in the water. The election's over. The race is over. Forget about it. And now uh, they're just running around trying to get him to say that he will accept the uh, whatever uh, the outcome is on election day, no matter what. I don't think he's going to say that. You know what? The question should be framed by the uh, by folks at home. Why mm -hmm. would the national liberal media want him to accept the outcome unconditionally, unless they ha they along with the establishment uh, uh, had conspired to create an outcome that uh, they would want his acquiescence rather than uh, uh, than otherwise? I, I mean, well, you know, you can play this game all day long. But you I sure accept can. your view. I think mm -hmm. that he was smart as the Dickens because mm -hmm. this has dominated the conversation since Wednesday. It has yep. served notice on the left, which is mm -hmm. already uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> they've already corrupted one uh, election. And that was the entire primaries of the Democratic Party in which they absolutely stole the election from Senator Bernie Sanders. It serves yep. notice along with, uh, we should point out, Operation uh, Project Veritas and James O'Keefe, in which we find Democratic operatives, one of whom had been in the White House 340 times since 2009, actually going to his rallies and creating disruption, agitation, and violence. I mean, he's done a, quite a job here, hasn't he? He has, and, and, all, and I think the result is he's confirming what an awful lot of people knew anyway, but the investigative reporting that might have disclosed it you know, months earlier uh, it was just not there. Uh, and the media didn't do it. And well, they and were now we many have James members of the, of the national liberal media, Fred, were too busy uh, advising and consulting uh, John mm -hmm. Podesta and the Democratic campaign, don't you think? I mean, my goodness, you wouldn't want to interfere with their, uh, their consulting work by asking for investigative journalism on the campaign uh, that has already stolen one election uh, and uh, assured the nomination of Hillary Clinton. Well, I think uh, it's pretty clear where uh, most people in the media stand. Uh, and uh, I think, you know, most Americans understand what Trump was really saying. He was saying, look, I'm going to make sure this election is fair. Uh, and I assume he's going to do that. And we'll, uh, and we'll see what happens on November 8th and, and what yeah. he does then. Yep. And he uh, has uh, asked for volunteers to be poll watchers and to assure uh, things are in order. Uh, and, and that's going to be helpful to his cause and to the, uh, to the cause of his uh, uh, millions of supporters as well. 
Fred Barnes, you know, go ahead. You get the last I'm word. I'm just going to add one thing. You mm -hmm. know, Lou, if they if there were extensive voter fraud, it would be it would be hard to uh, ex uh, expose. I mean, it, it it really is. We don't know what's happened in a lot of earlier elections. I mean, there was a thought that it was uh, voter uh, fraud in Chicago in 1960 that elected JFK, but uh, I've never seen evidence for that. It was just yeah. sort of thought to be the case. Yeah, I, I was like that, but. Uh, uh, John F. Kennedy's father said he would uh, spend a lot of money to get him elected, but he wasn't going to pay for a landslide. Fred <laughs> Barnes, thanks so much for being with us. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Twin cyber attacks today disrupting some of the biggest websites on the Internet. What's going on? Amazon, Spotify, Reddit, PayPal, Twitter, among the sites taken down by cyber attackers, they launched what is called a distributed denial of service attack uh, on Dyn, an internet infrastructure provider. A denial of service attack is when a web service is intentionally overwhelmed by traffic from uh, many different sources. The Department of Homeland Security, though, says it's working to determine who was behind the attack. I'm surprised they don't know right now, aren't you? Because they knew very early that the Russians were responsible uh, for some of the source materials used by WikiLeaks. Now, isn't it extraordinary? We're not getting a, a straight answer yet uh, out of the same agencies. Multiple sources, however, telling Fox News that this attack does not appear to be directed by a foreign government, but perhaps by a disgruntled individual or individuals. And I say to that, I'm waiting for further sources to come forward because none of this uh, is quite satisfying. This could be, well, it could presage something something much greater. Uh, and, and it is a reason uh, for concern for all of us. We're coming right back. We have much more on the presidential campaign, on the nominees, and Donald Trump has taken the stage in Pennsylvania. We're going to come right back with his rally and his words in just a moment. Stay with us. As I said, we'll be right back. As I said, Donald Trump is holding a rally in the battleground state of Pennsylvania, and according to the uh, uh, Real Clear Politics average, Clinton has a six-point lead there. Trump is at the Athletic Club Sports Training Center in Newtown. Let's listen in. Not only will we end government corruption, but we'll end economic stagnation. My plan lowers our business tax from 35 percent to 15 percent and lowers taxes for everybody straight across the board, everybody as individuals, and simplifies our tax code. We're also going to rebuild our inner cities. African Americans and Hispanics living in the inner cities are suffering. Violence is unbelievable and unbearable. You walk to the store with your child and you get shot. There's no education. There are no jobs. There's no safety. Nearly 3,500 people have been shot in Chicago since January 1st, the beginning of the year. Homicides are up nearly 50 percent in Washington, D.C., and more than 60 percent in Baltimore. And it's getting worse. Murder in the United States is up more, think of it, is up more than at any time over 45 years, the highest level in 45 years. You don't hear that from these dishonest people back there, meaning the media. Look at them. Look at them. Most dishonest people. They are the most dishonest people. You know, some, uh, some people in the national liberal media are criticizing Donald they Trump uh, for effectively campaigning against the national liberal media. Uh, in point of fact, they may not like it, but he does have his point, and no, uh, and we've seen his point proved this week. The number of people in the national media attacking him for saying that he would not un that he would not uh, accept the results system, of an election, uh, uh, of irrespective of the fraud or irrespective of the corruption of that election, uh, is mind-boggling. Uh, joining us uh, tonight. Uh, Washington so Times columnist mean, Kelly Riddell, and we'll be going back to Donald Trump uh, as, uh, uh, as the situation warrants. Uh, radio talk show host on New York's WOR, Mark Simone, joins us as well. Uh, Kelly, let me start with this, uh, this amazing reaction on the part of the national 
particularly left, but it's uh, also broader than that. The national media jumping on him for saying he would not accept the uh, uh, results until the, the time arrives. Uh, I I've never seen a more screwball, wrong-headed <laughs> reaction uh, to anything by the national media as a group than this. It's, it's hypocrisy at its best, given what happened in 2000 and what happened in 2004 and the fact that John Kerry didn't concede until the next day. I mean, this is just, it's getting too much to handle, and the media is getting too much to handle, that people are tuning out. Uh, they're simply losing faith in, in, in the media. The media standing is at an all-time low. And Donald Trump has a point. I mean, especially with the Project Veritas videos that came, the undercover sting videos, talking of these Democratic operatives, basically talking about how they're inciting riots at uh, Donald Trump rallies and how they're trying to perpetrate yeah. voter fraud. That was at a, the, the media did not cover that. The major networks this week, I mean, it was at a blackout. So to ignore that video, which broke on Monday, by the well, way, how about um, a, before Donald Trump said this, and, and then and then to not compute all of this together is just, is just awful, if and, you ask me. And to ignore the fact here, Mark, that uh, <laughs> there is the Democratic candidate, the nominee for the Democratic Party, on the stage with Donald Trump, wagging her finger at him and saying that uh, his supporters have been violent, while she full well knew that her campaign, the Democratic organization, uh, had already paid for operatives to go uh, to his rallies to agitate and to incite violence, and which they did, and shut down a rally in Chicago. I mean, that's chutzpah. Well, it's just awful. You know, uh, when, I, when that debate ended and everybody on those liberal networks, of course, that doesn't narrow it down much, but you, you know who I mean, screaming and yelling about how could he not accept the results of the election, I realized they, had, they were not accepting the results of the debate. He had won. I yeah, saw so even Nate Silver say so the other day. So uh, we're down to just pick anything to go after him with. I, I think they all decided a few weeks ago, you can't beat him on the issues. Let's just beat him on these things, these little quirky things. Let's try to just wear people down uh, on him. The interest, the energy, the enthusiasm on the part of uh, Trump supporters versus those uh, supporting Hillary Clinton. Kelly, uh, who has the edge and how big do you expect uh, the difference to be? This is where you can't trust the polls, right? Because polls can't measure momentum. They can't measure enthusiasm. Um, they don't know, especially given that they're predicting such a landslide for Hillary Clinton. How is that going to affect her voters? Are they even going to bother to come out to the polls on November 8th because she's going to win so dominantly? Uh, I, I know that the Donald Trump supporters are very enthusiastic, and it's really going to be a matter as if they, if they turn out in the numbers. And this right. is something that the polls just don't measure. Mark, you get the last word. Well, I know he's doing well. When you see the media in triple overdrive, they're at DEFCON 1 trying to stop him. Yeah. The day they relax a little, then I'll know he's in trouble. <laughs> Kelly Riddell, Mark Simone, thank you both for being here. And please be sure to vote in our poll tonight. Do you trust the Obama Justice Department and intelligence agencies to investigate honestly Clinton corruption and WikiLeaks documents? We'd <laughs> like to hear from you on that. Cast your vote on Twitter at Lou Dobbs. Follow me on Twitter at Lou Dobbs. Like me on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram at Lou Dobbs tonight. On Wall Street, stocks were mixed. The Dow down 17 points. The S&P lost a fraction. The Nasdaq up 16. Volume on the big board, 3.4 billion shares. For the week, stocks higher. The Dow and S&P up just under 1%. The Nasdaq up barely 1%. AT&T in advance talks to buy Time Warner. A mega merger that would unite AT&T's portfolio of wireless, broadband, and satellite television services with Warner's entertainment empire. Apple also reportedly interested in Time Warner, and we are told watching the talks closely. British American Tobacco making a $47 billion bid for roughly 58% of its U.S. peer, Reynolds American. The deal would create the largest listed tobacco company by revenue and market value in the entire world. And by the way, we're talking about over $200 billion worth of deals on this uh, October Friday. Quite, quite an impressive day in mergers and acquisitions. A reminder to listen to my reports three times a day, coast to coast on the Salem Radio Network. Up next, Donald Trump says he is very concerned about a rigged election. The mainstream liberal media, however, says, ah, don't, don't worry your head about that. Look away. Nothing to see here. Voter fraud, the subject of my commentary next.
And I'll tell you why every single citizen in this country ought to be very concerned about what is rigged and whether or not this election is among those things in this country that are rigged. My commentary is next. Much more straight ahead. Stay with us. A few thoughts now on a corrupt political system and a rigged election, the prospects, and for, if you will, a concerned citizenry that wants their votes counted, not diluted. Donald Trump has been right on every major issue in this campaign to this point, none more so than his focus on a crooked election system. The liberal national media went crazy this week when Trump said we need to restore integrity to our electoral process. It's extraordinary that this is where we are today. Why would anyone, why would the national mainstream media, why would anyone in the Democratic Party object to any candidates at any level their insistence on free and honest elections? According now to the left-wing media in this country, that's about all of the media, by the way, they would have you believe there's no voter fraud at all in this country. But there is, and we've detailed many of the cases here nightly. The Pew Charitable Trust found one in eight voter registrations in this country that are either inaccurate or no longer valid. That means 24 million invalid voter registrations in and of itself. That's not fraud. That's just the opportunity for fraud. Justice Department whistleblower Christian Adams, who will be here with us Monday, says there are four million dead voters on the voter rolls. And it's not just dead people voting. The governor of Texas, Greg Abbott, is now investigating the state's largest cases of voter fraud ever. Cases of political operatives filling out and returning other people's ballots without their consent. And where is the Obama Justice Department in all of this? Instead of working to uphold the integrity of our electoral system, it's fighting to stop Texas and 30 other states that want voter ID laws. The problem of voter fraud is so pervasive, a 2014 election study found more than 14 percent of non-citizens are registered to vote in this country. 14 percent of 24 million, more than 3 million voters. And that approaches Obama's margin of victory in the popular vote in 2012. That's how important voter registrations and voter integrity is. And within that group are illegal immigrants who are also on the voting rolls. And the Obama administration is pushing hard a drive to register immigrants to vote. And there is no reason to believe that this administration would make discreet judgments about immigration or naturalization status. We've learned through the WikiLeaks disclosures that Clinton campaign chair John Podesta said all illegal immigrants need to vote as a driver's license and nearly one in four states now allow illegal immigrants to obtain driver's licenses. So you tell me, is Donald Trump wrong to be concerned about the integrity of this election? Is it rigged? Or is it time for the American people to rouse themselves from a long slumber, face facts, deeply troubling facts, and get to the polls, work as observers or poll watchers, and vote, and vote? Vote for your country or lose it. That's where we are. The quotation of the evening, this one from P.J. O'Rourke, who said this. In our brief national history, we have shot four of our presidents. We worried five of them to death, impeached one, and hounded another out of office. And when all else fails, we hold an election and assassinate their character. We're coming right back with much more. Stay with us. Donald Trump on the attack today, condemning the establishment at a rally in North Carolina. It's a campaign about rejecting the cynicism and elitism of our failed political establishment. I'm going to fight for every citizen of every background from every stretch of this nation. I'm going to fight for every child living in poverty. I'm going to fight for African Americans who have not been treated fairly. And our next guest says the establishment is now in a full-blown panic over Donald Trump. And joining me now, Pat Buchanan, 
senior advisor to three presidents, twice himself a candidate for the Republican presidential nomination, nationally syndicated columnist and best-selling author and great American. Pat, great to have you here. Good hey, talking with you again, Lou. I, I have to say, uh, to talk about the establishment being in a panic, you can sense it when you look at what is happening with this, uh, this full-on 360-degree uh, assault by the national liberal media uh, against Donald Trump. It's breathtaking, and because he said, I will tell you at the time whether he accepts the results of an election. It is the most bizarre phenomenon I have witnessed in this campaign, and we've had a few uh, over the course of this almost year and a half. It's remarkable. You know, you know, Lou, I am astonished at the hysteria. You know, Trump goes out there and said, look, I'll tell you, I'll tell you later. Let's have a little suspense on whether I'm going to accept the results. And then they go in this panic as though he's going to be like the British general who burned down Washington <laughs> simply because he might not phone Hillary Clinton that night and say congratulations. Yeah. I mean, but I'll tell you what explains The modern it. day Al Gore. I, I mean, yeah. oh, my, what a horror thought. Yeah. But you're sure, but you know, the, there's a real terror at the heart of the establishment for a simple reason. Trump has exposed their complete disconnectedness to the country they're supposed to represent and lead. He basically has indicted and convicted them of leaving our borders open and allow tens of millions of people to walk across them, of, of taking our enormous manufacturing base and exporting it abroad, costing six million jobs, and of getting us into endless wars that they cannot win. He has exposed the real disconnect between right. the establishment of the country, and the establishment is panicked. I, I want to uh, share with the audience a, 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 a paragraph from your column. Quote, quoting Pat Buchanan, it may rule and run the country and may rig the system through mass immigration and a mammoth welfare state so that middle America is never again able to elect one of its own. But that establishment, disconnected from the people it rules, senses rightfully that it is unloved and even detested, end quote. A, a remarkable sentence, and I think absolutely true. Well, look at the facts. In the Democratic Party, Bernie Sanders, a socialist, what did he win? Almost two dozen primaries mm -hmm. and caucuses, got 40% of the Democratic vote. Ted Cruz and Donald Trump probably got 75% of all the Republican votes. Trump got half of them. What these voters are saying, what those huge rallies for Trump still are saying is, the, 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 the American people dislike and even detest the establishment that has done this to them. They recognize who is at fault. And quite frankly, Lou, the reaction, the hysterical reaction to what Trump said testifies to the fear that is gnawing at the heart of this establishment. And the real problem for our country is there's a real possibility that both the Republican establishment against which Trump and Cruz ran and the Democratic establishment, the same establishment we have now, could be in power continually with the same old policies. And, and, our, and the fact of the matter is this. This establishment is so ossified, has created such a stultifying orthodoxy, and I'm talking about one establishment. Uh, it's a bird with two wings, one Republican and one Democratic that there is no way to, to breed further innovation, to drive entrepreneurialism in this country, uh, and without watching at the same time tremendous, tremendous uh, margins of loss in personal liberty, uh, in terms of uh, over-regulation. It's happening, and we're not responding to it as a nation and now it's an ideological issue, and the only person capable of reversing it is, in my opinion, Donald Trump and his movement. I think basically that's all we've got left right now. And you are dead right. The two parties in Washington, D.C., their two establishment, are two wings of the same bird of prey. They're, I mean, you look at the two of them, what is the hope that they will change the very policies in trade and immigration and foreign policy and wars and regulations that they themselves have helped to impose on the country in which they believed. And then you take a look at Hillary Clinton, for example. Oh, I'm against the TPP now, which she had called the gold standard. We learned from WikiLeaks and all these other things. What does she believe in? 
I believe in common market of open borders Much and open trade. That's the end of America. Throughout and that's the what hemisphere. she believes. Let's see some building momentum. Come on, Pat. We've got to have some building <laughs> momentum. Pat Buchanan, great to have you with us. We appreciate it. Good to see Pleasure, you, my friend. old friend. Thank Take you it easy. so much. Joining me now, General Jack Keane, retired four-star general, chairman of the Institute for the Study of War, uh, former vice chair of the U.S. Army, and a Fox News military analyst. General, great to have you here. Uh, let me uh, begin uh, with uh, what we have just been reporting, and that is uh, that the, the Clinton uh, candidacy uh, is very troubling to many people because there's a, a immense concern that she can't handle uh, national secrets, uh, given her use of a private email server for State Department business, uh, uh, blurting out that uh, the response time for U.S. Uh, nuclear uh, uh, ICBMs is four minutes during a debate. What is your reaction, and are you troubled? Well, I, I've never heard of a, uh, a candidate for national office or a, a serving public official ever discuss nuclear response times. I mean, it is one of the things that no one but no one ever talks about publicly. That's just the reality of it. And very few people are privy to what those uh, response times are. I, I'm not privy to it, uh, uh, even when I was on active duty as a four-star general, because I didn't have any need to know. Right. So certainly the public does not have a need to know. And our adversaries do not have a need to know for certain. Uh, yeah, so it is disturbing. And, uh, and Mosul. Uh, Donald Trump has been very critical about the predictability of the Obama administration, by which I think he is referring in large measure to uh, stating straightforwardly what the plans are to deal with ISIS, to deal uh, with the enemy in Iraq. Uh, he, is he right or is he wrong in your judgment? Yeah, in, in general, he's right. We talk far too much about what our intentions are and the timing of those intentions, etc. And, and also, sometimes, after we conduct an operation, and particularly a classified operation like we did with Osama bin Laden, because we want to beat our chest a little bit, uh, we start talking about the details of those operations, which compromises what we refer to military as our techniques, our tactics, and, and procedures, and that's the ability to be successful at the next operation as well without our adversary knowing exactly how we do things. And on, uh, on their way uh, to uh, engage uh, ISIS and others, uh, presumably, uh, in Syria, the Russian fleet, uh, the northern fleet, and elements of the Baltic fleet uh, steaming through the English Channel, somewhat provocatively, uh, but on their way to Syria to uh, to make certain uh, that the uh, the matter of Aleppo is resolved. Uh, what do you make of it, and what is your reaction? What should be uh, this government's? Well, first of all, Putin just looks for opportunities for provocation because he's got a couple of things he's trying to do. One, he's establishing himself as the most respected and feared leader in the world, and I think he has ascertained that position. Secondly, he wants to return Russia to a world power status and be treated as such. And he knows that the best way to do some of this is to deal with the feckless Europeans whenever he can, and also something he's been doing rather steadily with President Obama for the last three or four years is humiliate and embarrass the United States at every opportunity he can find. General, as always, great to have you with us. Thanks so much. Good General. talking to you, Lou. General Jack Keane. Joining us tonight, Pastor Robert Jeffress, member of the Faith Advisory Council for Donald Trump, pastor at First Baptist Church in Dallas, Texas. Pastor, great to have you with us. I, I, how Thanks. energized, how extensive will the evangelical uh, uh, voters in this country, uh, how much will they be working uh, to get out the vote, and how, how many will be voting in this election for Donald Trump? Well, I think more and more are getting excited every day. I mean, this last week during the debate, we saw Donald Trump make the strongest commitment to a conservative Supreme Court and articulate the strongest defense of the pro-life position than any Republican presidential candidate in history, more so than Romney, McCain, either Bush 
Bushes or even Ronald Reagan. And I think that excites evangelicals to realize they are going to have somebody in the White House who is sympathetic with them. And I say often about uh, uh, Donald Trump, he may not be exactly like us, but at least he likes us. He likes conservative Christians and doesn't hate them like Barack Obama and his would-be successor, Hillary Clinton. The, these revelations in WikiLeaks in which uh, the, the Clinton campaign is, is effectively insulting uh, conservative uh, Catholic Christians and evangelicals, uh, why would there even be a discussion here? Um, I, I would think every evangelical, every conservative Catholic would be voting uh, for Donald Trump. Well, absolutely. I mean, these emails reveal that a future Clinton administration would have the same antipathy toward conservative Christians that Barack Obama has. Yeah. I mean, Lou, for the last eight years, Barack Obama has declared open season on conservative Christians, suing the little sisters of the poor, forcing uh, Christian schools to allow men into women's locker rooms. That war against religious liberty is only going to escalate under a Clinton administration. I, and I want to return to this issue uh, of getting out the vote and the energy and the enthusiasm, because that enthusiasm advantage that generally uh, Trump has over Hillary Clinton I, I can erode at the margin if evangelicals do what they did in 2012, which is sort of, you know, uh, sniff at the uh, very idea uh, of voting uh, and not go to the polls. Uh, is there going to be a significant organized effort to move evangelicals, uh, uh, conservative Catholics, yes. uh, and others to the polls. Well, there is going on that effort right now. There's a group called My Faith Votes. Ben Carson is the honorary chairman. I'm a part of it. Many others are trying to urge people to go out and vote. And, Lou, it's important that conservative Christians not get distracted by these secondary and tertiary no. issues like rigged election comments or the dinner last night. I mean, my gosh, people are saying they're not sure they're going to vote because they don't like Donald Let Trump's demeanor at a dinner. It's ridiculous. Yeah, by the way, the, the, you want to know how biased the liberal media is? They were talking about him being booed. So was Hillary Clinton, by the way. But the That's biggest right. boos were reserved for Mayor de Blasio. Uh, thank you very <laughs> much, New York City. Pastor, good to have you with us as always. Thanks so much. Thanks, Lou. That's it for us tonight. We thank you for being with us. Former Justice Department official Christian Adams joins us as we continue to look at the prospect of a rigged election and what will be done about it. Have a great weekend.